Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharala. Call Haloyim, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Harakak, Wadash. Blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwaf that's keeping the faith in the work. Shall keep at it. This is your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22. It says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Hamashiach crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. All right? In other words... The most highest people, majority-wise, they have to see it in order to, in order to believe it. All right. Then you got the others of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's people that have knowledge, but they never make it to the truth. Right. Like I say in Second uh, Timothy three seven, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So. The knowledge of the truth is foolishness to them because they don't believe it. They they know about other societies, right? Egyptologists and all this other nonsense, but they never make it to the truth, right? But ultimately, they're going to have to see it in order to believe that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is a dreadful power. He's a terrible power, right? And when they see it, they're going to remember that the Most High sent his people out, mainly the men, to preach the gospel, the truth of things to come and things that are. But when they actually see it, it's too late. Then they're going to be involved in the judgment that proceeds after. Right? So... Let me go to let's see where I wanna go. Let me go to the book of Daniel. Let's see. Daniel chapter nine. Daniel chapter nine and verse four. It says, And I prayed unto Yahweh my power, and made my confession and said, O Yahweh, the great and dreadful power keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. All right? It was already understood, right, in, in ancient times who our power was and how he did not play. And it was respected as such. Nowadays, people do not respect the most high power. Just being honest and just being real, the majority of people on this planet not just the most highest people, but the majority of people on this planet do not respect the most high power. Right? Half of them don't even believe that a power exists. They believe in themselves. As though man just made they self and, you know, invented things and just so happened to stumble upon science and Stumble upon math and, you know, made it what it is today. But there's a whole higher power that put all them thoughts into your head, that created all of this and shared some of that wisdom of mathematics and science with us. All right. And he's a dreadful power. Let me go to the book of Job. Job chapter 18 and um, verse 11. Right, before I get into this verse, like, who can explain how the brain forms in the womb? And who can explain how one brain could be smarter than another? Who can explain it? Who can explain how the brain retains knowledge and, and formulates ideas? How can you not believe in a higher power, man, All right? But anyway, this is the book of Job, chapter 18, and verse 11. It says, Terrors shall make him afraid on every side, 
and shall drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger bidden and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. All right. The how is a dreadful and terrible power. He's an austere power. Meaning he don't play. And so many of the most high people are saying, well, I'm going to have to see in order to believe. You're not understanding what you're speaking on. You're not understanding what you're asking for. All right? Go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 66. And verse 5. It says, come and see the works of power. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. All right? So your ass around here operating in absolute wickedness and you have the boldness to say, well, I'm going to have to see some. He going to have to show me some for me to believe in him. His word ain't enough. Man, you asking for all kinds of trouble. Cause you don't understand who you talking, who you talking about. You have no idea who power is. You have no knowledge of power. The only knowledge you have of power is what's been whispered, or spoken rather, through the mouths of people who don't, who also have no idea who power is. Right, Pastor Pope, Chop, Grandma, Auntie, Mama, Daddy. This society, they have no idea who power is. Those individuals don't read this word for real. All right. Go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. All right. How is a man of war? A man of war do not play games with you, man. All right? So I don't understand why you playing games with him. All right? And when the Mosai finally, you know, visits this place, like it's spoken of in the scriptures, it ain't nothing on this planet going to stop that destruction from happening. And I know scripture says that the surrounding nations are going to be in the midst of war. When you have Bashimi Hawashai reveals himself, and they're going to stop fighting amongst each other and turn their attention to you, how Bashimi Hawashai, and try to fight him off. And it's not going to work out for him. All right? Scripture says, Hawashai coming with the clouds, man. All right? Scripture says he, he won't meet him as a man, he going to meet him as a power. All right. So let me go to the book of Sirach. Chapter 7. Which is Ecclesiasticus. Um, chapter 16. And verse 17. It says, Say not thou, I will hide myself from Yahweh. Shall any remember me from above? I shall not be remembered among so many people. For what is my soul among such an infinite number of creatures? Saying, don't say that when all hell break loose that who are you so you can duck off and hide in the bushes or hide underneath whatever and wherever. He coming for that ass. All right? It says, um, verse 18, Behold the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth and all that therein is shall be moved when he shall visit. Meaning there will be nowhere to hide. You can hop your ass in a, in a spacecraft and dive off into space. You can go into the depths of the depths of the rocks or sea. It don't matter wherever you are. He coming for you. And when he come, <laughs> Yeah, he coming with fire, man. And utter destruction. All right? 
I'm going to go to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 51. And um, verse 53. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith Yahweh. He did it before, he'll do it again. This place is doomed, man. Right? I don't, I don't give a damn how big your army is, bro. Just read about it in Exodus when Pharaoh tried to do what he did and ended up getting bammed up. Ain't nothing can stop Yahweh's judgment. Nothing on this planet. Nobody can pray that away. All right, because the judgment is already written. Time just got to catch up to it. All right? And like I said, man, when he come, he coming to destroy. All right? I'm going to go to the book of Zechariah. Chapter 5 and um, from the top. Let's see. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying road. Those are chariots. Right, like I said earlier, uh, like Script says, Yahweh shall coming with the clouds. Those clouds are chariots. Right? It says, And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying road. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. This is what people are asking to see in order to believe. Chariots swinging low and straight up destroying everything. All right? Verse 4 says, I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. That house of the thief is, is where we are right now. Scripture says, He that stilleth the man, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Paraphrasing. Right, we were stolen from our land, and we are still found in our oppressor's hands. That's the thief. All right, it says, I'm gonna read that again. Zechariah chapter five and verse four. I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and it's a and slot, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. All right? This is what you asking to see in order to believe in your how about shimmy how shy. All right? And that is absolute madness, man. Absolute madness. Same book. Um chapter 14. And verse 12, it says, And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that are fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So, yeah, you're going to believe when you see it, but it's going to be too late. Because what you're going to be witnessing is your own destruction. All right. And go to the book of Revelation. Because we just read about what the plague is that's going to tear this place up. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now, who is the Most High's people? 
it ain't all Israel that he's speaking to because when it says come out of her out, come out of her my people that's the most high's people being beamed up out of this place while destruction takes place all right let's go to the book of Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8 and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Those are the individuals that are saying, well, I got to see this to believe it. I ain't finna believe it just yet, bro. I'm finna go live my life YOLO, and I only got one life to live, and I'm going to live my best life. And, you know, I just don't believe in the Bible. That's a white man book and all the other nonsense that they spew. It says, you, you are going to be cut off and die. Right? It says, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, which is the one third. And will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, Yahweh is my power. So that voice that was speaking in Revelation 18, 4, that said, come out of her, my people, that's who it's talking to. The Most High Yahweh by Shemi Shai is not a respect of persons. Just because you Israel does not mean that you will be saved. That don't give you an automatic pass just because you believe in Yahweh by Shemi Shai. It's faith and works. Heavy on the faith, but you got to have the works to prove the faith. Right? One of those works through faith is believing in your how about Shim Yahweh Shah. You can't do it without faith. You can't complete that work without faith. Right? So the most high right now is showing people as we speak that he's real, but they're not seeing it, therefore they don't believe it. We'll go to the book of Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 16. Hold up. And um verse 17. Says, Woe is me, woe is me. Who would deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mournings the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. These things are happening now. But script says this, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness nor be always mindful of the scourges. Why? Because they have to see Yahweh personally, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, in order for them to believe it. Not understanding what you're really saying is, I'm going to have to face destruction before I believe any of this. Because you believe in the lies of Christianity or you believe in, well, basically that's it. You believe in the lies of Christianity. That's why a lot of people don't even believe in the Bible itself because of Christianity. That's why people go into Egyptology because of Christianity. Christianity comes from the walls of Egypt. Yeah, the basis of it, no doubt. Right? The Holy Trinity and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's made up. But when you tell that person that it's a spirit inside of them that won't allow them to go into the Bible and researching for themselves all right so when when you do see it oh you're gonna believe it man you're gonna believe it. you ain't gonna have no choice but to believe it but like i said man it's gonna be too late at that time but unfortunately um uh, the majority of the most highest people yeah that's how they gonna make it it's gonna they gonna have to be born into it. all right so let me end with this. 
Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. That's when you're going to believe after death by pain. All right, so with that, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Ratazah, these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Hello and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Harakakudah Shalom Yashallah.